but not so much anymore. And I'll show that uh, slide of them in just a minute. Um, if you have a thymoma, as I already mentioned, we always do it. These are the ways you can take a thymus gland out. So the old-fashioned way is the way they do open heart surgery. You cut the, st the sternal bone in half and you take the thymus out. But then now the, uh, there's um, much less invasive, invasive ways to take out the thymus gland. And there's this machine called a robotics machine um, that most hospitals have and all the surgeons like to use it. And they just make these very small incisions under the um, armpit and they can go in with a camera and and a robot arm and take the thymus out that way. And it seems to work, I mean, technically it seems to work. Whether or not it makes your MG better, I don't know. So most patients want to do, want the big robotics, uh, want the robotics uh, device instead of the big surgery where you have, you know, it's very uh, big scar. And so uh, if patients want to have a thymectomy, I let them pick whatever treatment they want, um, whatever type of surgery they or their surgeon want to do. So these are the um, hot new treatments that are that we're looking at in MG. The most exciting ones are in this um, box, uh, the top three. Um, these other ones I'm not so excited about. Um, cyclophosphamide is an old chemotherapy drug, uh, which uh, which got some attention again about a decade ago but uh, it, it really uh, just wipes out your immune system and it's, it's, it's dangerous. Um, we did a study on the oral pill methotrexate and the results just came out. Dr. Pasnor was the other investigator in that study. It was a nationwide study. It did not seem to do a whole lot for our patients um, uh, in that research study. But the three biggies that are going on now are this study by a drug company called Alexion and the drug is named Ecluzumab. So occluzumab is a drug that's, that inhibits complement, and complement is one of these proteins that um, is involved in the attack on the muscle in myasthenia gravis. And uh, it's, it inhibits complement. It's an intravenous drug. It's given, the infusions are like every two weeks, isn't that right, Amatha? And, um, and we did a preliminary study uh, at about a dozen sites around the country. We were one of the sites where it looked like maybe the drug was working in myasthenia. So now this drug company, Alexion, is doing a much larger nationwide study um, to, sh to see if the drug works and to try to get it approved by the federal government for myasthenia. Um, if this study is positive, and we'll know in about a year, it will really be the biggest breakthrough in myasthenia. Um, and people who are on prednisone who are still having trouble uh, will probably go to this uh, uh, cluzumab um, uh, rather than azathioprine or cyclosporine or methotrexate. Now, we just may try IVIG before a cluzumab because the expense, but it will be in there in one of the treatment options we can have. But we don't know. The, the, the research study may end up being negative, so we'll know in a year. But it's a big breakthrough th uh, treatment for myasthenia. The problem with the um is the cost. So the cost of this drug, you, you'll fall out of your chair when you hear this, it's $30,000 a month. And it's, and it's being used for other diseases now. And insurance companies are paying it. It's crazy, isn't it? And so for a lot of rare diseases now, the marketplace, uh, the drug companies have found out that they can charge it for, it used to be a thousand a month, then it was 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, and 20, now we're up to 30,000 a month for treatment for rare diseases. And myasthenia is a rare disease. I mean, it's just staggering when you think about it. But we'll know in a year whether or not this drug works. The other one, uh, which has been around for treatment of cancer is called rituximab. And uh, that wipes out certain type of B cells in your blood. And um, it, um, it seems to work in some MG patients when we give it in the clinic, particularly in patients with musk antibody. Um, but whether or not it works in people with estoclin receptor antibody is not known. And so a big study is going on now. We're part of it. We've got a few patients in the study at KU. And we'll know in about a year. It's an expensive drug, but not as expensive as acluzumab. Um, and so, uh, and the nice thing about rituximab is you, you get uh, 
two, in the first month you get two to four treatments and then that's it. You don't get any more treatments for another six months or so. And it, and it seems to suppress the immune cells. So the, and, and the myasthenia gravis in some patients seems to get better. Then uh, a sort of a similar drug, rituximab, is a drug that's being developed, that's developed by a pharma company called GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, called Bolimumab, which I, is the hardest drug to pronounce. Um, and that's as a trial, a drug we're using now too in a research study. So it's exciting. I, I'm very excited about all three of these research studies that are going on in this box. And we're going to know the results of all these studies in about a year, or a year to two years, depending on when the last patient finishes and you have to follow them for a year. Um, so that's exciting for the MG field. So based on the data that I showed you, um, this is what I do personally in clinic. And this is what I did in 2007. Um, and this is what I do in 2015. So I have first line, second line, third line, fourth line, fifth line. Um, and it, this is all, you know, very gray. It's not black and white. And, but just as a general rule of thumb, as the first line treatment, we use pyridostigmine. I usually use generic, not trade, unless the patient wants trade. And then prednisone uh, as my first line treatment. And a thymectomy if they want it. It, it just depends and if they, if they want to go through it. Um, and then when we have the results of the research study in January, we'll be able to make a more informed decision. <laughs> On second line, if patients are still symptomatic after these, um, then I go to either azathioprine, cyclosporine, or IVIG. And, uh, and then third line, uh, uh, plasmapheresis, mycophenolate, maybe methotrexate. I have rituximab way down here in fourth line, um, which I think is where it should be until we get the results of the research study. But some patients with musk myasthenia, we do rituximab earlier um, if they have the musk antibody. And so that, that's how I do it now. Um, the last message I want to give, which is also maybe a bit controversial, what drugs to avoid in MG? And I, Ann and I talk about this all the time. And I know there's literature from the national organization, from the local organization, about drugs to avoid. Mamath and I helped develop some of that. And now I'm wondering if, we, if it was the right list, because most drugs are safe in MG. I mean, it, if you look at that list of drugs that are contraindicated, it's huge. Um, it's antihistamines, it's anticholinergics, beta blockers for hypertension, calcium channel blockers, almost every antibiotic under the sun. Um, and and, and every, every, almost every drug, there's been reports that MG patients got worse on that drug. So it's really hard to know. And so I uh, tell patients not to worry too much about it. You know, the, one of the drugs on that list is anticholinergics. Anticholinergics is the main drug I use with people when they're on pyridostigmine or mestinon. I, I strongly advise them to use that drug to control the diarrhea. And I've never seen it make MG worse, so how these drugs got on the list, I, I don't know. Um, the only drugs that you really need to worry about are if you're in the hospital. The, your doctors need to avoid aminoglycosides, which is also known as genomycin or similar drugs. Or if you're having anesthesia, they need to avoid curare-based drugs, and the anesthesiologists give this. And so before an elective surgery, you have to tell the surgeon and the anesthesiologist you have MG, and they'll avoid these drugs. But those are the big ones. The pills, you can almost always make an argument. If you need the pill, you can take it, but it's a discussion you have to have with the doctor. Um, and I don't get over, overly worried about it. So how far have we come at MG? Um, the good news is that most patients now improve with current therapies. Um, and there are a few, uh, I had numerous, I, I was going to change the slide to several emerging and encouraging treatments, which we're excited about, which the results will come out the next year. We now do have these MGM, uh, uh, Mycena Gravis Foundation of America guidelines and endpoint measurements for, for research trials, which has helped a lot. I didn't really get into the issue of signing patients up for research studies for myasthenia gravis. That's what this bullet's about. Recruitment for MG trials is very hard. And I don't know why. I mean, everyone wants to support research. Patients want to support it. Doctors want to support it. And then when we try to enroll patients in trials, it seems like myasthenia gravis trials are the hardest to recruit for nationally. 
many trials have failed because of poor recruitment and they've been stopped by the sponsors. Um, uh, and um, it, so no one's been able to come up with the right answer on why the trials are so hard to do, but if you have any brilliant ideas, I'd like to know. And, and I would say support the research studies if possible. And then we'll know the results of the thymectomy study in January, which is just a couple months away. So we're very excited about that. And I think that's it. That's all I was going to say. So I will stop there. Thank you again very much for inviting me. And I guess we're going to have a chance. Thank you. I'm going to touch on just two things, um, then we'll take a quick bathroom break and then begin with our panel. And we still have donuts and drinks out there if you guys want to grab more before lunch. Um, Dr. Barron talked about the price of some of these drugs. I think lots of you we have told, and you may have read about in our newsletter, we have found the Canadian Pharmacy, NorthwestPharmacy.com. Lots of um, our members use that to get their drugs a lot less expensive. I see people shaking heads. Have you guys used it? Um, great things. We've heard great things about it, so if you guys want to write that down, it's northwestpharmacy.com. And you can get pretty much all your drugs at that website. Um, also about trials, we always post all the trials going on at KU in our newsletter, so that should be coming out in about a month, month and a half, two months, so you can check that out, and there's a link on there that you can go and read about them as well.